You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is You're Not Broken with your host, Dr. Sally Reed. Sally is dedicated to helping you find your way out of your emotional, physical, and spiritual pain so you can live the life that you were truly meant to live. So now, please welcome the host of You're Not Broken, Sally Reed. Hello, this is Sally here, and welcome to You're Not Broken. Uh, We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This week, we are starting a three-part series, uh, what I'm calling the Blissful Life Series. Um, It's a series about learning to to control your energy, your mood, and how you show up in the world. And this will help you, as we talked about in the previous two shows, manifest. It truly will. So what I'm going to teach you is how to do um, like a reset at the quantum level. There'll be three shows. And by the way, there'll be my final three shows. You'll be able to find me later. I'm going to switch over to the podcast. You'll find me on iTunes. with Still the same name. You're not broken if you still want to find me. Right. So let's dive right in. The first thing I want to talk about is mindset. And what I mean by mindset, you've heard mindset a million times. I know you have. And what I mean about mindset is the eyeglasses, the shades, the coloring you put on your world. It's how, it's the lens by which you view your world. Now, there was a a very smart lady who wrote a book in 2006. If you want to look it up, I highly suggest you read it. It's called Simply Mindset by Carol Dweck. And uh, she talks about two different types of people, people who have a growth mindset and people who who have a set or fixed mindset. Now, um, how do you know you're one or the other? Well, you ask yourself a question. Um, It's a yes or no question. I believe people were born with all the intelligence they're going to have. It's a yes or no question. Or I believe that people are born with the personality they're going to have and nothing will change it. That's a yes or no question. Or I believe people are born with all the talent they're going to have, which is also a yes or no question. If you answered yes to these questions, either, you know, one of them or all of them, then you have a fixed mindset in that area. Now here's um, another one. I believe people can work and achieve and get what they want out of life. I believe challenges are there to teach us. See, these are growth mindset ideas. And so I want to take a minute for you to to notice what kind of a mindset you might be showing up with, because that's going to color everything you do in life. And here's a way to tell if you have a fixed mindset. Well, I'm just going to give you an example of, of somebody we already know. Um, we have all heard of Michael Jordan, haven't we? I think you must have been living under a rock if you haven't heard of Michael Jordan. Now, the one thing that Michael is famous for is the humility and the hours he puts in just giving it the good try. He shows up, he gives it 100%. If he screws up, he apologizes and works harder. He works harder. And one of the things he is known for is being surprised at all the accolades. He's known for that. He's, wow, I'm just a human. That is an example of a growth mindset. Now, let me show you an example, a famous example of a fixed mindset. Somebody who believes that um, 
he has to be the best. He has to prove himself at all times. He has to, um, you know, he has to, to only win. Winning is all that's allowed. And I am talking about our president. He is a fine example of a fixed mindset. Do you see the difference? I thought you might. <laughs> Okay, well, now let's move on to the first step in my five-step process to create your reset at the quantum level so you can show up in the world the way you want to show up. Now, the first one is your homecoming blueprint. It's just, you know, it's like start at the very beginning. You know, we're starting at the beginning of the yellow brick road because nobody is required to bring anything to the table that isn't already there because you know what? You were born with everything and this is not the fixed mindset. You were born with all the tools you need to create what you want in life. That is a true growth mindset. You don't need any new tools. They're all there. You just have to hone them. You just have to learn to use them. So the first thing to do is to take a clear eyed look at where you are and then a realistic view of where you want to go. Like you can't say, oh, wow, I weigh 200 pounds and I want to weigh 125 tomorrow. See, that's not clear eyed. That's not realistic, right? <laughs> so you can say, wow, wouldn't it be nice little by little to grow in this certain direction or in the case of weight loss, ungrow in this certain direction, right? So what I want to do with the first segment is to ground you literally and also balance you so you're not so... Um, uh, what's a word, uh, knocked over by things in your life, by your emotions, by setbacks, right? Because I, I want you to be able to unleash possibilities and you have to learn how to learn to do that, right? It's some people do it naturally. And those are the folks that, you know, take off and are successful without seemingly any trouble, but we don't know what goes on on the inside. They just keep working at it and working at it. So our first milestone is to be able to notice what's going on in our body. It's, it's truly just beginning mindfulness. Now, did you know that most people, most people, in order to succeed and move forward in this world, especially, especially if they suffer from a mixed, a fixed mindset, is they become numb. They're so required to not make mistakes and to always succeed, that they become numb to the feedback, any negative feedback that they may be receiving and or they become so overwhelmed by it that they have to numb themselves. There, um, and so a lot of people don't really know what's going on inside their bodies. And so this first step is about unplugging this block and being able to feel what's going on inside your body. A lot of people are not body aware. So another mile, milestone is going to be able to, you'll be able to tell whether you know, um, whether you're grounded or not. You can f literally feel the difference between being connected to the earth and not. And, and I'm later on, I'm going to go into what grounding is. So the next step we're not going to cover, well, we may have time to cover it today, and I'm calling it unplug your trash compactor or move beyond your trash, whatever you so choose it. And what we're going to do is find, you know, I've talked about ghosts before. We're going to find up all this bound up energy, and we're, we're going to find it and let it go. And our milestone is that you will actually feel physically lighter and you will feel less physical pain. Uh, but I'm going to give you a caveat. We can let go of this stuff, but unless you get the pattern, which is what we're going to talk about next, unless you address the pattern, the trash can is just going to fill up again. So the third step is your perfect message decoder. And that's when we're going to look our emotions and just look at them without any charges, without any judgment. They just are. You know, what am I feeling? I'm feeling this. I don't need to know why. I don't need to know how. I just need to know that, which to me means I, it's an indicator of going in a direction I don't care for. That's all it is. So when we get to the message decoder, that segment is going to cover what the emotions that are coming to us are really telling us. 
it, you know, the segment has vast ramifications on you actually gaining control of your mind and your emotional bandwidth. Um, it's where you begin to discover your inner Zen and you will learn how to track down the source of your emotions. And I don't mean source as in he did it, she did it, because you remember the emotions are coming from you. You're going to learn what is the trigger. I feel this when I'm doing that. It's that type of thing. Not, I feel crappy when he walks in the room. No, he triggers this feeling in me because I notice this about myself is actually more correct. Do you see what I mean? And that's what it's going to come around. It's people call it emotional intelligence. People call it, I mean, there are a lot of names for it. And all I want you to do this milestone is that you'll be able to know what the messages are of the emotions. That's it. And the, the next step, step four, is what I call the no bull, bullshit GPS. <laughs> and we touched on it in a second. You know, instead of placing blame on outside stimulus, uh, this is the step where we really take steps to change from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. And we are taking responsibility and we're understanding how we choose. We are choosing to react, not they made me. Because nobody is responsible for your happiness but you. Sorry, nobody. Not your mother, not your boyfriend, not your husband, nobody. Only you are responsible for your happiness. And you, it, it's about deciding how you want to show up in the world. This one is, the step four is so, so wonderfully uh, empowering. It allows you to truly expand out into your world. And your milestone is you're able to notice when things are coming from you instead of that they are coming at you. You'll be able to notice how you are pulling. It's, it's literally you are creating your law of attraction. That's the milestone. You can watch yourself in action and notice that you are creating what you are getting. And imagine the power you can feel when you notice that. You have, you have control then. It is amazing. And the very last segment is the Upgrade Your Life segment. In this segment, you're exploring the patterns and the rules that were laid down when you were in a fixed mindset or when you were feeling um, unbalanced. And you'll be able to go through them bit by bit and notice how they feel to you and change them. This is the step to breaking free from your ruts. You can have emotional bandwidth and do very well, but if you fall back in the pattern, it's going to be like climbing out of a pit every day. So you want each rule to be examined for its validity and purpose. And if it isn't working, out it goes. Because you are the one that sets the bar on what's right or wrong for you. And you are the one that creates for yourself, you see? that Step five can take some time, but it is so totally worth it. You will feel so much less pain, uh, so much less suffering. You know how you have like the bad emotional days? They're going to be few and far between. Yes, we all suffer setbacks, but the next question is, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to go home? And, you know, eat a pint of ice cream and, and wine at the soap operas? Or are we going to say, hmm, what am I learning from this? And instead of learning, well, I'm not going to do that again, we're going to take it apart and say, wow, if I just change this one way of showing up, I might change everything. You see, we're going to get strategic. That's what this whole three segment session is about. So in the few minutes we have left, let's start with your homecoming blueprint. I want you to be aware of your energy and what you choose to have or have not in your sovereign space because you are sovereign. Even though we're all interconnected, remember the law of oneness, even though we're all interconnected, you are sovereign over your sacred space, your 12 foot space. Now, we have to take a break right now, but when we come back, we're going to dive into the blueprint and we're going to dive into what it means to be grounded. 
I'm Dr. Sally Reed. You are listening to You're Not Broken on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Catch you after the break. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Hello, Dr. Sally Reed here. Now, before the break, we started talking about step one, where we are learning to be aware of our energy and we are beginning to choose what we will have or will not allow in our space. This is the one that so many people say, how do I protect myself from all this stuff that's coming at me? Well, remember what I just said? It's not coming at you. It is triggering something within you. I've um, basically a, a good way to explain it is when you're standing inside a, you know, a cafe and a boom car goes by and the big plate glass window just rattles because whatever is on the outside is rattling you literally. <laughs> See how that works? These people aren't making you do it. You are feeling it and then responding. Okay. So remember I said there's no special skills needed for this step. And each one of the steps that I talked about are designed to build up to the next step. You're not required to learn any special tools or you don't, you know, have to feel like you're a failure if you can't do it right away. It is just you have everything you need to do this. Okay? It's just an um the ability to hone. You know how Everybody can play a piano, but not everybody can make the notes come out in line. That takes practice. That's what this is, you know, because a piano is just pressing down a key. I mean, even if you don't have fingers, you can play it, you know, because you can just put it with your elbow or your nose, right? So this is all I'm saying is you can make noise. You can do this. And if you don't get it right away, big deal. We'll try it again in another way. All right? So. Remember I said we want to take a clear-eyed look at where we are and where we want to go. We're going to unleash our possibilities here. Okay, so the first step, the first step is to ground. I know everybody talks about grounding. Everybody talks about earthing. Everybody talks about how important it is. But here's why. I mean grounding in the sense of being electrically connected to the earth because you are a bioelectrical machine. I mean, explain this to me. How do those silly machines work when they hook them up to your body and you can make them go jiggly jiggly in the oscilloscope? Is it not measuring your electrical impulses? Why, of course it is. So you are an electrical machine. And when the electrical machine is left ungrounded, it shorts out. It's as simple as that. It, it, that's it. And, and the earth is like a 
giant battery. It contains natural, subtle electric charge. It's like a special kind of energy that's present in the ground, which is why everybody talks about walking around barefoot. And the Earth's energy is is actually, <laughs> this is what NASA says about it. It's the flow of liquid iron in the Earth's core creates electric currents. And that in turn creates a magnetic field. End of story. So what happens when the two magnets are end-to-end connected properly? They're so, they, it feels so solid. You know, you played with magnets as a kid. When you try to put the poles that don't match together and the poles that do match together, essentially we just want your poles to match the earth. That's all it is. So it helps you, you know, how it feels so solid when the two magnets connect. That's what it feels like when you're connected to the earth. It's safety, stability, stability. Um, everything in the electrical world is connected to this ground. I mean, how many times have I personally have set up electric fences for my animals and I'm pounding ground wires into the ground so things can be grounded. It is so important. I mean, something as simple as a light, it always has a ground in its plug. All the wiring in your house is grounded. I mean, heaven forbid if it wasn't. <laughs> okay. So when we're grounded as humans, you're going to notice it. You're going to notice that you feel great. Now, here's something that you may have noticed. It's when you accidentally naturally ground. You know how when you go to the beach and you spend time walking in the sand and having the ocean go around your ankles, (sighs) right? You just got grounded. Or same thing when you're out in the mountains and you're hiking, (sighs) right? Doesn't that feel great? Or even if you're at a nice grassy park, you have grounded yourself, you know, albeit very temporarily. But when you do those activities, you've grounded yourself. My son used to live near the ocean and he swam in the ocean every single day of the year. And then he ended up moving back to Tennessee. And, you know, those of you who know geography notice that we don't have any oceans. He started feeling edgy and he didn't figure out Why? It was because he wasn't grounding every day anymore. You see? So when you're electrically grounded, you feel centered, you feel solid, you feel strong, you feel balanced, a lot less tense and a lot less stressed. Sign me up, right? Overall, you feel good. And also, if you're in pain, you feel less of it because grounding reduces the level of inflammation in your body. That's been proven. There are all kinds of people who sell things to you, you know, like earthing mats and little tabs that you can put on yourself. It's been scientifically proved, proven with thermography that it reduces inflammation. So let's go over grounding. We have energy systems in our body. And we also have an energy aura around us. You know, we've talked about that where we... um, share, so to speak, share our energy up to 12 feet from our body. And that energy is what connects with all other energy. Remember, again, the, the law of oneness. Now let's move into the law of attraction. Whatever that energy is tune it's playing, whatever it's vibrating at, will attract the same vibration to it. You see how simple? There you go. So when we have this vibration, this tune, we can learn to play the tune the way we want to. That's why I'm talking about grounding. And we want to ground in the energy system of the earth and in the energy system of the universe, of the cosmos, because it's up there too. A lot of people call it God. But what it, what it really is, is the the oneness that all is connected to if you is the best way I can explain it without religion. So we're going to take our central core energy. Now, if you want to study up on the different layers of the body, uh, the um, Hindu culture and the yogic culture have an amazing uh, map of the body energy systems. I'm not clearly I'm not going to get into that right now. So what we're going to focus on right now is just grounding. Okay, the energy system, grounding to the energy systems of the earth and then kind of upward grounding to the cosmos. Now, why do we ground? Well, we've already been over that. 
But why is it suddenly important? Because, you know, years ago, nobody talked about this and nobody was acting weird. They were all fine. But here's what has changed. We don't walk on the earth as much. You know, we don't walk barefoot. Back in the 30s, everybody walked barefoot because nobody could afford to buy shoes. And when they did buy shoes, their soles were made of natural materials. They weren't made of plastic. They weren't made of rubber. They weren't made of an insulator that insulated us from the earth. So people don't walk barefoot. They don't walk and naturally ground themselves. Remember I said when you were walking in the ocean barefooted, you were naturally grounding yourself. So... What we want to do is connect on a daily basis, daily basis. So because the, the earth, remember, is a massive reservoir and it's negatively charged ions. And without connection to this reservoir, the cells in our bodies are not able to balance the positive, you know, negative to positive. Remember the two magnets that results from things like, you know, electron deficient free radicals or, you know, and yeah, everybody's talking about this, so I don't want to get into it too far, you know. Um, but when there is an excess of the positive charge, that's when we start technically shorting out. And another thing, remember all the electromagnetic radiation in this world, Bluetooth, mobile phones? blah, 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 blah. It really helps reduce the electromagnetic radiation in our bodies. Some people believe it disrupts us. Some people believe that it doesn't. I don't want to get into that today. All I know is that when we are grounded, that stuff doesn't bug us as much. So now that I've talked about why, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about what it does for your body. All right, it has decreased levels of inflammation and pain. We've already talked about that. And I've touched on it briefly about how it will reduce your stress levels. Well, you know, if you're not in as much pain and there isn't as much inflammation, of course your stress goes down. But it also helps your rhythm, you know, the the um the cycle of awake and sleep, uh, cortisol, uh, all your hormones, your stress hormones, your non-stress, melatonin, it helps that cycle. It helps balance it out. I don't know why, it just does. It's been tested. Uh, you'll look, you can look that up. I don't have the exact study right now. It helps regulate your metabolism. You're not going to, you know, get a stress belly, you know, at the big, where you're gaining weight around your middle. That's stress weight. And remember, I said it reduces your inflammation. But, you know, when your inflammation is reduced, then your brain works better. You don't forget stuff. You're not in a muzzy haze. You're not like, where is my car keys? What did I do with the baby? No, you just know where things are. <laughs> so that's another reason. Another reason to ground is it improves your circulation because when you're grounded, um, remember there's iron in your blood. Remember that? Geritol, iron poor blood. Well, what happens is our body, it kind of has, um, little, uh, it, it helps. Oh, gosh, how can I explain it better? When you have a ground, where there's a, a true polar connection and everything's flowing in the right direction. It's sort of like little, um, pinballs. It just, it'll push us there. The tension in your veins helps bring the blood back. Your heart functions more more efficiently and you get better blood flow up in the higher extremities like in your face or in your head and your neck and um, not to forget your brain we do want blood flow to continue to our brains and when you ground this is the really cool thing when enough people are grounded the whole vibration that you put out in the world changes. And when enough people, have you noticed this? When you get a whole bunch of really happy people together in one place, i.e. church service, or um, at a wedding, or at a place where everybody's meditating in unison, do you notice how things change so very much? The whole, it, you know, these vibrations are infectious. So when you can be the change, and you'll help your vibrations lift other people. And that's worth any grounding. 
we got to take a break and we're going to go over the different methods of grounding when we come back. I'm Dr. Sally Reed. You are listening to You're Not Broken and we're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Catch me after the break. Psychologist, master certified coach and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi-day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hello, Dr. Sally Reed here, and you're listening to You're Not Broken on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Before the break, we were talking about why we ground. Now let's start talking about how to ground. Um, most people, when they talk about grounding, they're talking about earthing. And what I mean by earthing is what we were talking about before, walking barefoot or wearing only leather-soled shoes and walking around on dirt. Or um, you can buy things, like I mentioned before, uh, mats to sleep on or patches or different. <laughs> Do you remember those old grounding things that they used to have on the cars in the 70s? I'm showing my age. These little metal rods that they, <laughs> they used to put on the, the, the edges of the car so you wouldn't get shocked when you touched your car. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they do have things like that, and they have been tested, and they do work. I'm not laughing at them because they don't work. I was laughing at the, at the old grounding of cars. My way of grounding is energetic grounding. It's free. You don't have to buy anything. Um, all you have to do is notice when you're not grounded and perform an exercise. Now, here is how to notice how you're not grounded. Some big telltale signs. You are feeling physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually drained. I mean, like freaking exhausted for no darn good reason. You're not grounded. There's an energy leak somewhere. Or you're easily affected by what's going on around you, especially other people's moods or energy. Like, ew, he has bad energy. I don't like him near me. Right? How about you lack focus? You forget stuff. You get easily irritable or scattered. You, can, you know, you start, you can't finish. You start, you can't finish. Half the time, I think people accused of being ADD or ADHD are just not grounded. Seriously. What if you're like feeling, feeling spacey or lightheaded? Um, or you're like daydreamy, your head's in the clouds. You're constantly like drifting off into... Never, never land. <laughs> that was me as a kid in school. Um, that means you're not grounded. Or what about if you're busy, you're doing, but you're not getting anything done? Like, where the frick did my day go? I've been working on doing all day, but it doesn't seem like I got anything done. Yeah, that's a big sign. What if you're clumsy? 
you don't see the world around you. You trip a lot. You drop things a lot. You run into stuff. <laughs> I love that whack, right? That's a sign of not being grounded because you are not uh, physically aware of your surroundings by being connected to them. Or what if you feel like you are a victim of unwanted energy, like it comes bounding over you? What if you feel stuff being, uh, and that also was me, I, you know, going into the Dollar General, I'd come out feeling suicidal. I mean, like, ugh, it was bad. Or what if you feel kind of spinny? That I feel that occasionally um, where you can feel whirly or spinny, not sitting down or standing up, but just in general, dizziness for no good reason. That's a sign of not being grounded. Or if you are around somebody and you absorb their feelings, their emotions and moods, but you can't tell that they're not yours. That's a big one. That's, that's tantamount to not being grounded. Um, it's like when you're in a grocery store and everything was perfectly lovely and you pass by somebody and suddenly you feel like you want to cry and you have no idea why. Because a lot of times when you're feeling emotions for people, when they have suppressed their emotions, they come out stronger in you than they actually were feeling themselves. Please don't ask me why that happens. It just does. Because remember, the, um, the aura around the body is up to 12 feet. So you're passing through and they're, quote unquote, resisting a feeling, but it's in there and you picked it up. Thank you for sharing, right? Um, another one is like you suddenly feel nauseous or queasy, you know, an upset stomach. That's a common sign that you're not grounded, especially during uh, meditation or healing or spiritual work. Remember that if you're feeling suddenly nauseous during uh, healing work, during a healing session, that's a sign you may or may not be properly grounded. Or if you equally, uh, if you easily lose your bearings, if you don't get to see the outside world a lot, you're not grounded. Or <laughs> people accuse you of having ADD. That's a big sign. You're not grounded. All that Adderall. Ah, guys, just go outside and ground. Um, so if you're a highly sensitive person, get this. Grounding can be kind of difficult, but we're going to go through some of the stuff you can get past with grounding. Now, um, it might be hard if you're feeling physical pain because you, you want to escape any kind of physical or emotional pain. Highly sensitive people are expert escape artists. Just raise your hand and testify. You are. Um, but if you're in pain and you're really tired and you're uncomfortable, it's really hard to be present in your body. At least you believe it is. Oddly enough, when you accomplish a simple energetic grounding, not the earthing grounding, but my energetic grounding, a lot of that uncomfortableness and pain will subside. So what happens when you are resisting grounding, when you're emotionally or physically in pain, you're working with the law of resistance, right? Not the law of allowing. You're working with the law of resistance. And what happens? You get stuck in that pattern of pain. Because whenever you work with that law of resistance, you're basically saying, oh, goody, let's stick here. <laughs> right. So let's go on. How to get past it. Number one, I've always said this a million times, take a deep breath. Breathing is life. Life is breathing. It changes everything. Take a several deep breaths. Do a series of the... Um, Four, seven, eight breaths. Remember, in four, hold seven, out eight. Do a series of those. That helps. It really helps. Send your breath and love to the places in your body that are painful or uncomfortable. Allow yourself to just be. Don't try to push it. Don't try to resist it. Um, when you are breathing to that area, just uh, I know everybody says this, hold space, but just casually observe like it's a TV show that is not at all connected to you. You're just, huh, 
Or maybe, you know, it's a, it's people talking in the table next door and you're kind of eavesdropping. It's not about you. It's about something else. Get some distance from it. You know, just breathe to it. Sit next to it and see what's there, essentially. It won't kill you. I promise it won't. It's just there. And it's there for a reason. It's a message. And see if you can feel where it begins and ends. That's a big one. So if you step too close to it, you'll start feeling bad because you've got it walled off. Just breathe and notice where it is. That's all I'm asking you to do. A lot of times physical pain is emotional. Remember that? It's just emotional pain that's been going on for a long time. You can use the same thing for just brand new um, acute emotional pain, not chronic emotional pain. Like if you're feeling uh, super intense emotions of maybe failure, like we talked about, or um, longing or depression or whatever it is, whatever your um, low feeling of emotion, you can do the same thing. It's hard to ground when you're vulnerable, but you're going to sit next to it. You want to reverse the pattern and how we do it, remember, is to breathe. Just breathe into it. Breathe into it. Grounding will bring a natural feeling of balance as soon as you can get to the grounding. As soon as you can get to the grounding. You want to sit next to the emotions again. Allow the emotions to just be there running around in your body. Uh, Breathe into it like it's a wave and, and watch those waves flow around. Once you see that it's just merely energy in a wave, you can blow through it. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt you. It just is. Again, four, seven, eight breaths really do help with this. Now, the hardest way to ground, the hardest time to ground is when you get the not wanting to be feeling, you know, when you get into full on depression. Um, If you don't want to be here, if you don't want to be living, if you don't want to be in your body, then... A lot of people do have a problem grounding there. And again, grounding will change it. And here's what you're going to do to change it. You want to integrate yourself slowly with your breath. Not wanting to be here is about something else, about not feeling belong like you belong, not feeling connection. Well, the first connection to get is with the earth, Right. All humans want to feel like they are connected and belong. All humans want to feel like they know how to be in this world. So the first thing to do is to connect with your earth, with the earth that will support you. Grounding actually will help you. And now the last way it's very difficult to ground is when you're so far away from your body that you have no idea where the grounding part is. And what I mean by this is the part of you that is you, the the soul spark jumps out of your body. It goes to the far edges of your ability to be you. And why does it jump out? Well, it jumps out because there's icky things going on in there and it doesn't want to be a party to it, i.e. super emotional, super pain, super sick. Um, I am an old enough person to have had childhood diseases before there were vaccinations for them. Trust me, those, those illnesses were uncomfortable and you do learn how to jump out of your body pretty quickly when you're running a high fever and you have mumps or measles or, or any one of the other diseases. Or when you're living in a stressful household or a stressful situation, there's a lot of anger or high emotions. Or, you know, say you've just broken your leg. (laughs) It hurts, right? You don't want to be there. That's the reason why you would jump out. So um, it's very, very difficult (laughs) to ground when you're not there. I'm going to tell you in just a few seconds how to get it back in. Close your eyes, breathe in deeply, and imagine you see a string that is attached to a balloon. Pull the string down, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down until you get the balloon in your hand. If the balloon is so far away that you keep pulling, it's not there, get a reel and reel it in. When you finally get the balloon in your hands, smile at it and place it back in your chest. 
This is Dr. Sally Reed, and you're uh, listening to You're Not Broken on the BBM Blog. Ah, can't even say it. Global Network. Catch me after the break. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hello, Dr. Sally Reed here, and you're listening to You're Not Broken on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And before the break, we were talking about getting that little part of you, that piece that was you, back into your body. We did the balloon method. Now, this segment, we're going to talk about actual energetic grounding and connecting with source. Um... But first, again, I want you to understand why that little piece jumps out. Remember, you've got junk in there. So when we do our meditation, first we're going to ground, then we're going to connect with source, and then we're going to start clearing up the junk that is around your heart space and soul seat. They're pretty much the same thing. Um, Again, if you want to learn more about it, there is an awful lot of literature online about where your soul seat is and what it is. But essentially, it's that little spark of you that joins you when you take your first breath and disappears when you take your last one. Uh, That's a good enough explanation, right? I think we all know what we're talking about. It's the essence of us that is us. So let's begin our meditation. I want everybody to get comfortable. Take a breath in. We're going to do a four, seven, eight breath. Breathe in one, two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in gently and allow the breath to just float around your body and exhale Mm. kind of make a mm noise one more time breathe in exhale with a mm noise just like that good the first thing we're going to do 
is an is imagine an infinite cord. It can be an electrical cord with a heavy plug, or it could be a rope with an anchor. It can be anything you want, and that cord is located just below your diaphragm, and it drops through the center of your body, between your legs, all the way down to the earth. And in our next next inhalation, we will open the trap door, and now as we exhale, drop the cord all the way down. Allow it to sink, 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 sink. Good. While you're waiting for it to connect, breathe in again gently. And exhale gently. Yes, I feel a lot of people have connected now. And I'd like you to notice that feeling of stability down in the lower dantian of your body. And here's a little bit of noticing I'd like you to notice that you can bring energy up bring it up and bring it up good and allow this energy to like bubble up bubble up bubble up all the way up in and around your heart space up into your throat up through your head and just as you are shining the light through the core your, your fontanelle, allow it to connect all the way up with the light. Go high, 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 high until you can feel or sense or know that you have connected to the light. And then sink gently back down, gently back down into your body. And I'd like you to set, to rest yourself just beneath your diaphragm. Just allow your sense to be right there. On our next breath in, I would like you to notice if there's any uh, resistance in your chest or heart area as you breathe in. Exhale, and as you exhale, see if you can see the shape of it in the area of your heart. And as you breathe in again, notice that you can create edges around this space that feels resistant. You may have intensified a bit of pain for people, and if it's not at your heart, it could be at your back in between your shoulder blades. And then exhale gently, notice that. So what we're going to do is look to see if there are any breaks or edges, if it's jagged. Breathe in and catch an edge and allow it to lift high, high, high all the way to source and as you exhale allow the contents to drift all the way down into the earth keep breathing around the edges and the insides of that piece until you eventually have a hollow shell breathe in and when the shell is hollow, exhale. And some of you may notice that when it's hollow, it just floats away. It just goes away. And if it doesn't want to go, look around and see if there's anything else inside that's weighing it down. Breathe to it with blue loving light allow green loving light and then finally a beautiful rose and with that rose light often the shell will drift away
And now that we have cleaned up the area, if there is more still that you need to clean up, here's a secret. Touch it and say thank you. You may go now. I no longer need you. And breathe it away. Find another space and touch it and say thank you. I appreciate you. You're free to go. Goodbye. And finally, for those of you who may have escaped again, look around for the string and gently, gently pull it back into your body. Pull that piece of you back in and lovingly say, welcome home. Welcome home. I would love for you to be here. And now I'd like you to notice that you have an energetic connection above and below and you are resting gently within your body. Breathe that in and relax. And now you are free to open your eyes and notice how balanced you can feel. Do this exercise every day until you notice when it's not there, when you're waiting to be there. You'll notice you'll get so accustomed that you need to be connected. I'm Dr. Sally Reed. You have been listening to You're Not Broken on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Join me next week. We will continue on this journey. Thank you so much. This has been You're Not Broken with host Dr. Sally Reed. Listen each week as Sally shows you how everything is energy and how her unique gifts can help you to take control of your life on Sally Reed's You're Not Broken. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.